Getting more out of Luminar's new AI features with Jeff Carlson. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. Go to upstart.com slash macvoices and find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time around, we have one of our favorite photography guests. I'm debating as to how I should introduce him. Should I say that he photographs well or that he photographs well? Because we have him on video. (laughs) I haven't figured that out yet. Mr. Jeff Carlson's here. Jeff, welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you so much. It's really all about how well I look here. And uh, I actually have no idea if it's good or not. But let's say it's good. Okay. That's why I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but, but but you also have a few skills with the shutter as well, I would say. Yep. A little bit here and there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this time though, um, well, we're going to talk photography, but not uh, not the taking of, but the processing of. You have a new book out, um, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI. This is not your first Luminar book, is it, Jeff? No, this is actually the my second Luminar book. Uh, it's sort of an update to my last book, which was The Photographer's Guide to Luminar 4. But as we can get into shortly, uh, Luminar 4 and Luminar AI are not really directly um, – AI is not directly an update. So it's not like Luminar AI is actually Luminar 5 just you know with a with – a, AI label because of course everything now has to say AI for it to be cool and you know exciting and like ooh it's, I've got trash can AI or something like that um, and so so you know in, in some ways this is a book that is an update of a previous book but in other ways um, it's not and that's that's kind of the the, the odd story of Luminar right now. Okay, so, so is it fair to say maybe it's a branch? Has is has Luminar branched? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess uh, I'm probably being uh, too oblique here. Basically, what happened was um, so Skylum, the company that makes Luminar, um, they had uh, developed Luminar Four, and that was really a you know a culmination of previous uh, versions of the software, and then. When they were looking ahead to the next version, they decided they wanted a few different priorities. They wanted something that was more AI focused. And um, Luminar 4 has a lot of AI tools. And I guess I should probably back up and say when when I say AI, they are uh, machine language, artificial intelligence based tools. Uh, we, we've talked about these a little bit on, on previous recordings, basically rather than just looking at an image and being able to say, I want the image to be brighter or darker, the software is examining the image and it knows things about it before you do anything. So for example, it'll know that there's a person in the shot and it can make edits based on the fact that it knows where a person is. And so they had done some of these these AI tools and they were they were well implemented, and people really liked it. And they also gave you that ability to do sophisticated edits without being a quote unquote sophisticated photo editor. So a lot of things like like take that example for, um, if you have a person in your photo, and one of the one of the things that you might do in a typical photo is you would want to say increase the contrast. And the problem is if if you're looking at a portrait, you've got, you know, a person occupying most of it, you want maybe contrast in the background. But if you do contrast on the person, well, it accentuates age lines, it, you know, can make like, you know, uh, shadows underneath their eyes be a lot more pronounced. It's just it's just very unflattering. And so there's a smart contrast tool. And what that does is as you increase this slider, it will apply contrast to the entire image, but it knows, ah, there's a person here. So we're not going to apply contrast to the person. And that way you still get like a flattering person, but you get added contrast to your image the way you wanted to. 
Now you could do that in other software, say Photoshop Elements or uh, Photoshop, and you would do that by creating a mask. So you would tell the software, this is where the person is, or this is the area that I want to exclude. And that gets really more complicated depending on, on how you implement it. So one of the huge advantages to these AI tools is not just that in some cases it can do a better job of you know picking out uh, like a sky or something. It greatly speeds up the thing that you're trying to do. And so the, the, the light bulb idea, and I should also mention, I'm not really speaking for Skyland. This is just my experience with the software and you know, some interactions. But I think the light bulb idea was, hey, we can appeal to a broader group of customers who may be intimidated by things like Photoshop or Lightroom. And they you know, don't really want all that complication or maybe they don't have time to learn all that complication, but they still want the really good results. So Luminar, I, Luminar AI came about with them saying, okay, we can implement more of these AI features and we can make this more appealing to people who are just casual editors who want to take advantage of these things, but they don't want to have to become a Photoshop expert. They don't want to have to learn how to do masking and all of that. So, so when Luminar AI came around, um, some of this was a marketing thing where Skylum really positioned it as a completely separate thing, even though a lot of the tools and a lot of the controls carry over from, from uh, Luminar 4. But at the, the very, very core, the, the base engine was written with an AI first focus in mind. And so I think if, if you were to look at them side by side, you'd be like, okay, this seems like kind of a, it's definitely an upgrade, but it's got a lot of the similar things of Luminar 4. But in Skylum's mind, and at least under the hood, it's, it's a whole new thing that they've taken their tools and, and brought them over and adapted them and then built on top of that. Does that make sense? Yeah, good, I think so. Good summary, think, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, um, and and part of this is my fault because I should have said that you know Luminar is a photo editing application, photo enhancement application, like Photoshop. That you know, but it's not Photoshop. Um, yeah. So that so that and and I was excited to talk to you about this because of the AI factor. Um, I mean, frankly, you know, I, I love to play with my photos, but I don't have time to play with my photos. And so I usually, just candidly, I mean, most of the time, unless there's something I really want to try to get just perfect for printing or whatever, you know, Apple's photos, the enhancements and the controls there are good enough. But yeah. I also have played with some of the raw tools out there, and I feel like I don't have the skill set for that. And this is where I feel like the AI might come in because it will know things. Well, you said Photoshop. You could you could set up a mask. I'm not going to set up a mask, Jeff. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I know I should, but I'm not going to. But yeah. something like this provides that that's more of that capability than I've ever had before. Yeah, exactly. And you know, there are times when you absolutely do want to use a mask, but you know that as soon as you add a layer mask and you kind of start going down that route, you become part of a sort of smaller and smaller niche of, of photo editing because you're sort of more, more dedicated to get into the weeds with that kind of stuff. And before, like you really had to do that if you wanted to get, you know, certain results and Luminar AI and just sort of AI in general like because it knows more about the image, it just opens up a whole lot of different possibilities. I mean, you know, I mentioned the 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 portrait tools, for example. Um, having a person in your photo, that's kind of one of those things that that um, AI has been really good at for a long time. I mean, even to the extent of, you know, even in photos, like 
Apple's Photos application will be able to look at your images and say, "Oh, well, there's there's Chuck and there's Jeff," and you know, it like it, it can figure out who the people are. And for many years, that was kind of the extent of it. And it was good for organizing. You could say, "Hey, show me all the pictures with Chuck and I," and and that would come up. But you know, there there's more information there. There's more. Um, awareness, I guess you could say. Because, for example, if the software knows that there's a person in the photo, well, then the software also knows where the person's face is. And if it recognizes a face, then it recognizes where eyes and nose and features are. And then it can do things uh, based on that. So, um, I, it actually, my example is a little funny because uh, Luminar doesn't actually have any people recognition in the sense of, uh, you know, being able to say, okay, these are pictures of Jeff. It's just looking at your image and breaking things down based on, you know, hundreds of thousands of images that it's already looked at. This is a person. These are two people. Uh, this is a, a person's face. This is, this is like a full body. Um, this is uh, a sky behind them. And like, once it can break those things down, it opens up a lot of different possibilities. So I think the 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 big excuse me the biggest example of this actually is sort of something recent, which is uh, Luminar AI just released update four, and that adds this this Bokeh AI. Actually, I think they call it Portrait Bokeh AI. Got to make sure I get the right. The right terminology, otherwise, uh, just because that's how I am as a book author. Um, Portrait Bokeh AI, uh, or Bokeh, if you want to say it the right way. Uh, and, and what that does is that gives you that softness behind a person. And we've seen this in Apple's uh, portrait mode when you're shooting with an iPhone, and it's using depth map information to identify, okay, there's a person, and then the person is, you know, such and such distance away, and then everything behind it is a further distance, and it can artificially blur that background. And the phone does that for lots of reasons. Mostly, you know, the, the sensor is really small and the lens is really small, so it doesn't really do that naturally in the same way. And so sometimes you'll have a shot where you have a person and you have a background, but maybe the background is a little busy, or maybe you just don't want everything to be so in focus. And that can be even, you know, shot with any sort of camera. And so what the Portrait Bokeh AI uh, feature does is figure out where a person is, and it makes a mask for you, which is nice. Uh, and then it can blur the background, and it has a bunch of different controls as to how much it's blurred, um, what the perceived distance is. Um, and you can then, if you want to, you can sort of mess with that mask so that if, for example, the, the AI sees you, and then it sees like maybe you know, a, a railing that's next to you and that's in focus and everything else is out of focus. You're like, well, that wasn't exactly right. You can just sort of paint that little railing part out and just focus on, on the person. Okay. God, that was a lot. I know, I'm sorry. This is oh, how no, no, I tend to... No, 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 no. I, I love it because there there's so many questions here that come up that I want to ask and want to make sure I, I hit all of them. Yeah. So what I one thing I just heard you say that I like, and maybe this is obvious, but not necessarily, is that this is not necessarily a one-click deal. That if I say, to go back to one of your earlier examples, I want contrast, mm -hmm. and it says... I've got a I've got a headshot of of a person, so I'm going to apply the contrast here, but not here. That you can, I think you said, mess with the with, with the mask. You can do some adjustments. And yeah. It, is it bokeh or bokeh? Which is correct? I I believe that it is bokeh, and I okay. and I always say it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, actually, actually, so it's um, it, because it, it's a. I, I think it comes from uh, Japanese and. Uh, I believe the correct pronunciation is Jif. Oh, God. Don't, don't go there. 
we'll be getting emails all evening. <laughs> okay, so Boca Bouquet, whatever. So that tells me that it lets, as you said, it lets me adjust it because there's one particular video recording service out there that we're not using that has one setting for it and it's like, oh my God, you know, it looks like, yeah. it, it doesn't look blurred, it looks watercolored in back of you. Now, yeah. the good news is that that provides a lot of security for whatever's behind you. The bad news <laughs> is that you look ridiculous. So, right. you know, I like the idea, but I also have the impression from what I know about Luminar AI, said that right, yeah, Luminar AI, is that yep. this can be also a bit of a one-click tool for people like me. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, um, you mentioning that makes me realize that that I, I sort of subverted my whole opening statement about Luminar AI and <laughs> you know by jumping directly into a tool that that actually has a mask. Uh, so I'll I'll take a half a step back um, and say yes. Uh, part of the appeal of Luminar AI is that oftentimes it's either one click or one slider that will do the trick. And actually uh, with with this uh, portrait bouquet uh, portrait book yeah I'm just going to assume that I'm going to get it wrong half the time, so whatever it is. With this portrait tool, um, you can just say, like, like turn it on, uh, set an amount, and and be done with it. I mean, you know, depending on the image, it, that may be literally all you need to know. And if you want, you can increase the amount so that it's a little more blurry or less blurry to give the effect that you're looking for. Uh, another thing about Luminar, uh, both Luminar 4 and Luminar AI, there's a control that's just a single make this image better. And that is uh, just called Enhance AI. And there's an Accent AI slider. And you can absolutely just drag that halfway, see what happens. And I would say in like 80% of the cases, you'll end up with exactly what you're looking for because it, it's looking at the entire image. And so it knows, all right, this is a little underexposed. There's a sky. Maybe that needs a little bit more uh, uh, contrast in the sky. There's a person there. It might smooth them out a little bit. Like it's, it's just a good overall push the slider and you're done. And what's also nice about this is Luminar, it's a standalone application, but it can also work as a Lightroom plugin or a Photos extension. So if you use Photos normally and you come up with a, an image where you think, I know that Luminar could do something with this, then basically there's a control in Photos. You send it to Luminar, it opens up, you do your thing, sends it back to Photos, and you have your edited version there. So... Um, you know, it's it's really designed so that a lot of these things that it can do, a lot of sophisticated things, really can be done with just you know one click or one slider. And then, if you want, you can then sort of get deeper into it and adjust the mask and, and things like that, like I mentioned. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Upstart, fast and fair personal loans. Go to upstart.com slash macvoices and find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments. Why are you sitting there with the burden of high interest rate debt? Doesn't matter where it came from, it's there, and it's costing you money, stress, and may be preventing you from doing things you want to do. Why not take a look at Upstart? Upstart is the fast, easy way to pay off that high interest debt by getting an online loan and a smarter rate. How does Upstart do it? By looking at not just your credit score, but a lot more about you. Your income and your employment are the keys to a rate quote that will take you about five minutes online, and if you accept, can put your loan funds in your pocket in as little as one business day. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash macvoices. That's upstart.com slash macvoices. Don't forget to use my URL so they know that I was the one that sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Again, go to upstart.com slash macvoices for a smarter rate today. Thanks to Upstart for their support of Mac Voices. 
I mean, that's really nice because that means the people that are already familiar with what Apple's photos can do can try out Luminar. But again, Jeff, you said one phrase there, and I have to ask. So you say, I, I have an image that I think Luminar could do something with. Mm -hmm. Do I have to be Jeff Carlson to know what that image is, or is it advisable just to throw any image in and say, here, let's see what happens? Absolutely. Throw any image in. Um, the, the, the reason that I, that I sort of pointed that out is if you have an image where you just know it's, it's just too dark and you know, maybe like the, the, the mid-tones or the, the shadowy areas are, are a little murky, um, you can absolutely use the controls in photos to fix that. But if you have something like a, you know, a picture that is of a person and that person is dark, but maybe like the, the background is fairly bright. So if you increase the exposure of the entire image, the person would be better illuminated, but maybe the sky would get completely blown out and you would lose all your detail. It'd just be too bright. And that would be a case where you're like, okay, I, I'm, I know that Luminar will let me do more with this. I know that I can go into Luminar and just brighten that person's face. There's a, a control there that just handles the, the illumination of someone's face, which I, I think when I'm editing uh, pictures of people, I almost always you know, just bring that up just a notch because you know, it's the, the person is kind of the star of the show there and you want them to... Uh, you know, be a little bit more visible without messing with everything around them. So you can, you know, you can increase the illumination of their face. You can change the contrast in the background, do a few more of those things that sort of break the image down more than photos can do, make those edits. And then when you save them, they go back to photos and if at some later point you're like, mm, that's not really what I wanted, you can just delete that edit and your your original is always uh, non-destructively saved. That was, you're reading my mind because that was going to be my next question is, am I, am I endangering myself here? Nope, nope, nope. It's all uh, non-destructive. How about um, – you tell me – I'm not sure what the proper term would be, but, but applying multiple Luminar AI effects, I'm, I'm not sure if stacking would be the right term or uh – -huh progressing through them. Is that advisable, not advisable? Does, does it end up showing up more flaws in your photos than helping them? Um, that turns out to be an excellent question um, because, well, for, for, for a number of different reasons. Um, so when you're going from photos, we'll stick with that example for right now. Um, when you when you send it to Luminar, you make your edits, you send it back, and it basically sends back an edited version. And so if you want to like go in and, and tweak that, you're basically just sort of re-editing that. And, and the way the photos architecture works, you have the original and then you have the edited version and it can jump back and forth between those. Um, some apps will take advantage of being able to, to save those settings. So for example, uh, the app Raw Power um, by uh, Gentleman Coders, if you send something from photos to raw power, you make some edits and then you send it back to photos and then you realize later, oh, I need this to be a little bit brighter in the shadows. You can then uh, use the photos extension to go back to raw power and just tweak the, sh the shadows level. Uh, Luminar AI, and actually I should probably double check this on update four, but um, previously, it, it, it would not give you that sort of granularity. Um, and my apologies if I'm forgetting if it actually does that now. But um, so so you sort of have like, you know, the, the edited version. And if you want to go back, then you just have to re-edit it. Now, in terms of being in the app, the reason why this is a really interesting question is because one of the biggest differences between Luminar 4 and Luminar AI is that Skylum got rid of layers. So we were talking earlier about creating a mask or maybe a, a, a layer mask. And uh, you know, in things like Photoshop, you can build up different layers and say, 
you know, like this layer will make a black and white conversion and this layer will adjust the tone and this layer will, you know, do something else. And one of the very cool things about Luminar 4 and why it's actually still a good app to use if you need this sort of thing is you could have layers in Luminar and every layer would have the capability to perform all of the different editing tools that, that it offered. So you could have a layer that would, um, like I said, do like one that's black and white and one that deals with tone. Um, or if you're going for like maybe some special effect, you can apply two layers of the same tool. Like, you know, maybe it just doesn't get enough or you're, you're, you're trying to be even more creative. Well, the problem is, and you can probably already see it as we're talking, suddenly I've just gotten a lot more complicated because now we're dealing with different layers and what's on this layer and why do I have this over on this layer here and masking and, you know, we're kind of shifted all the way back to that original problem of oh, this is too complicated. I don't have time to learn all this and I'm going to throw up my hands and walk away. And so Luminar AI in the effort to sort of draw in more people, they said, you know what, we're not going to deal with, with layers. We're just going to get rid of layers entirely, which is kind of a bummer in, in some cases. Um, you know, like the, there are definitely things that I miss from Luminar 4, but, um, you know, for your average person who probably never even touched layers, it's, it, it's an improvement. Now, Here's like sort of subparagraph B of this answer. <laughs> so Luminar AI does not have layers, but it kind of has layers. And this is something that uh, I think is not as confusing as it sounds, but it, it's more confusing for people who are used to working with layers. Basically, you can do uh, masking in Luminar AI, and you can have multiple masks stacked on top of each other, but they're not exactly layers. So they kind of act like layers. So let's bring this to a, a, a concrete example. Let's say um, I have, you know, again, a, a picture of like a person and they are against a, a field of sunflowers and sky. And Let's say that, per actually, uh, this is one of the examples I use in my book. Um, so in order to make sure that the sky wasn't completely blown out, uh, I shot the image really, really dark. I mean, the, the, the resulting image was really dark, but it was a raw image. So I knew that there was plenty of data to work with. So I use a tool to, um, you know, lighten the person in the foreground. Well, the portrait tool will just lighten their face. And then it sort of looks like, like they're wearing clown makeup or something. So what I could do is I could create a mask and basically just sort of paint around the person and increase the exposure just on that person. So, you know, yes, we've jumped back into that complexity, but not quite the same level if that helps. Yeah. What I heard, I think, is that that complexity is available if you need or want to go down that path. But yes, not only do you not have to, you're not even forced or encouraged to necessarily. That, yeah, like, like that said everything uh, much briefer and succinct than I did. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's the that's exactly the point because um, it, it would be perfectly easy to just do a fully AI thing that has no additional control. In fact, uh, Skylum had a program like that, um, the name of which I'm currently blanking on, and the idea was like it was just the AI tools, and you just load an image, and it makes it better, and you export it, and that's it. Uh, photo lemur is what it was called. And, you know, like, like that's, that's, that's cool. But, you know, this is a full editing package. And so you're going to have people who say, well, the AI will get me 
eighty percent there. That that um, you know that that one one slider will kind of do what I want, but I also know that I want the foreground to be a little bit brighter, or I want something else uh, to be different. And so then you also have the capability of unlocking these more professional tools, not unlocking, they're all, they're all there, but you know, like, like tapping into all these other tools that give you professional editing that isn't just, you know, the, the sort of surface level AI. So basically, you know, it's saying, look, we are here for you. If you don't want to have to know anything about color channels and layers, like don't worry about it. But if you do know about this, here's how to take advantage of them. And quite frankly, that's also one of the reasons why I wrote a book about it, because it can be very sort of deceptively easy to jump in and say, oh, well, this is just going to, you know, give me whatever I want in a couple of clicks and boom, there you go. And oftentimes it can. And then there are some times when you really want to dig in and you know there's either a specific effect that you're going for, or you're you're just trying to you know tease out detail in one area of the image, and how can you do that? And that's what the book explains. It goes into depth on you know here's how to do all these these other intricate things, or stick with the 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 really uh, you know sort of general make this image better slider. Jeff Carlson will be back in the next edition of Mac Voices to talk more about his new book, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI. Next time, Jeff gives us the perfect example showing off the book's cover photo, both before and after applying Luminar AI. That might be the most telling part of the of the whole interview and of the capabilities of Luminar AI and why you need Jeff to guide you through it. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'm Chuck Joyner, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.